In today's lecture, we will be discussing the ideal and the non-ideal sources. What are ideal sources? The ideal sources are those imaginary electrical sources that provides constant voltage or current to the circuit irrespective of the value of the load current. It is not possible to build a source having zero internal resistance. So, all the real sources are called the practical or the non-ideal sources. In the previous lecture, we have already discussed the ideal voltage source and we saw that an ideal voltage source is a voltage source which will provide a constant voltage across its terminal irrespective of the value of the load and in practice there is no source which can be called an ideal voltage source so we can say that an ideal voltage source is a voltage source which has zero internal resistance Now let us consider what is a practical voltage source. The practical voltage sources are the real sources which we use in our daily life. A practical voltage source has some internal resistance which will cause a drop in the terminal voltage due to the current flowing through it. Practically a voltage source can be considered as an ideal voltage source having a small resistance connected in series with it. That is we can say that a practical voltage source is an ideal voltage source having a small internal resistance connected in series with it as shown in this figure. From this figure we find that this is a practical voltage source and it, what, uh, what is a practical voltage source? It is actually an ideal voltage source with a small internal resistance connected in series with it. So that when current flows through this source then there will be some voltage drop across this resistance as a result of which the voltage obtained at this terminal will not be the same as Vs but it will be a little bit less than Vs. So this is an example of practical voltage source. That is a practical voltage source is nothing but it is an ideal voltage source with a small internal resistance connected in series with it. Now let us move on to the next type of the source which is an ideal current source. The ideal current source provides exactly the same current to any load resistance and it doesn't change its current with a change in the load resistance. And there is no source which can be called as an ideal current source. So an ideal current source cannot be created in a laboratory. This is only a theoretical concept. And such a type of source that is an ideal current source is only possible if it has an infinite resistance connected across it. Ideally, such a current source should supply a constant current even when the value of the load is infinite. And this is only possible when the output terminals are open circuited. So we find that this is impossible and no, there is no such practical source which can supply infinite power. 
So this is only a theoretical concept. The figure shows an ideal current source and the characteristics of the ideal current source. So this is the symbol of an ideal current source. This is the symbol of an ideal current source. So an ideal current source is a source which will provide a constant value of the current. Now if we plot the characteristics of the ideal current source, then we will get a straight line parallel to this x-axis. So from this characteristics we find that the value of the current is constant throughout irrespective of the value of the load resistance. And um, an ideal current source must have infinite internal resistance that is the value of the internal resistance across it should be infinite and there is no source which can have infinite internal resistance so practically there is no source which can be called as an ideal current source so this is also a theoretical concept and we just study the ideal voltage source and the ideal current source to understand the concept of the practical voltage source and the practical current source. Now the, ne now the next type of the current source is the practical current source. Now what is a practical current source? The practical current sources are the sources which we use in our day to day life and they are very easy to manufacture. The ideal current source, as we saw earlier, that the ideal current source must have infinite internal resistance, whereas the practical current sources are the sources which will have some internal resistance connected in parallel to the ideal current source. That is, we can say that from this figure, we find that this is a practical current source. So practical current source is nothing but it is an ideal current source with the resistance connected in parallel to this ideal current source. So an ideal current source along with some internal resistance connected in parallel to it, this is called a practical current source. Now let us see the characteristics of the voltage source and the current source. We have plotted both the ideal current source and the practical current source and similarly here we have plotted both the ideal voltage source and the practical voltage source to understand the concept of the ideal and the practical voltage and the current source. From the characteristics of the voltage source we find that the graph of the ideal voltage source is a straight line parallel to this axis whereas the graph of the practical voltage source decreases with the value of the load current. So this is the graph of ideal voltage source and this is the graph of ideal practical voltage source. Similarly, if we draw the characteristics of the current source then we find that we find that the graph of the ideal current source is a straight line parallel to this axis and the value of the current remains constant throughout it does not change with the change in the value of the resistance whereas in case of practical current source, we find that the value of the current is not constant. So this is the graph of the practical current source and this is the graph of the ideal current source. Hope the concept of the ideal and the practical current and the voltage source is clear to all of you.